With no suspect and no murder weapon, you might be wondering what is at the scene. The answer is likely a lot if police have DNA evidence, which experts say is commonly found in most stabbing cases. Anchor Roland Barris looked into the promise DNA evidence holds. Idaho is home to one of the top experts in the entire world on forensic DNA. His name is Greg Hampikian, and he's been instrumental in exonerating the wrongfully accused like Amanda Knox and Christopher Tapp. And he says he wouldn't be surprised at all if investigators in Moscow already have the DNA of the U of I killer. No one but the investigators know for sure what evidence they have. But Greg Hampikian says in the case of a brutal multiple stabbing, it's unlikely the murderer would not leave DNA evidence behind. If it's a deep wound, their hand can come in contact with my shirt, right? Or my skin, if it's on the skin. And so those sites where the injury is in a stabbing wound are, are very important to, to swab and collect DNA from. And anything touched in the house could also hold clues. What about someone touching a, a door handle, someone mm -hmm. you know, touching a doorbell, any of that stuff, um, you could find DNA there. Yeah, yeah. And this, uh, you know, the perpetrator got in and left and probably handled some of those objects. The key is knowing where to look. And Hampikian says FBI investigators especially are well trained in that. The next problem is finding a match. And Hampikian has advice for investigators there. Just make sure you take a sample from everybody you talk to. Just ask them, will you give us a DNA sample? He says such practice would have caught the real killer of Idaho and Angie Dodge in 1996 and saved Christopher Tapp two decades in jail for a wrongful conviction. If Moscow investigators have suspicious DNA, a quick check of various criminal databases could turn up an identity. If the suspect has no criminal background, though, investigators might have to rely on genealogy databases like 23andMe to find a family connection. And that can be difficult. But Hampi says cases like this require patience. Uh, uh, you know, a crime is like a surgery. It takes as long as it has to has to take. Uh, if they're going to do genealogy, that's a different kind of, you know, crime surgery than just going out and uh, uh, you, you have a suspect you compare to a door handle or something. Hampikian says it is common for assailants who use a knife to cut themselves. And even if their blood and DNA is mixed with that of the victim, modern technology can easily separate the two. And Hampikian says that it should take no more than a day or two to get results back from a lab if a case is a top priority. Roland Barris, Idaho News 6.